The Entrepreneur's Library, Episode 74. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today we have Frank Cespedes, author of Aligning Strategy and Sales. Welcome, Frank, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Well, my thanks to you, Wade, and it truly is my pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you. Will you take just a moment to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally? Well, my name's Frank Cespedes. I'm a uh, professor at uh, Harvard's Business School, and uh, my background, I think, is uh, reasonably straightforward. I was a professor for uh, 11 years here. Uh, I then left, ran a business uh, for 12 years. Uh, sold the business, and then returned to academia here at uh, HBS just about five years ago. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Now, let's, let's jump right into your book, Aligning Strategy and Sales, which was just made available for purchase on September 2nd, 2014. And Frank, we're going to move quickly, but we're really going to cover the top questions that our listener slash reader would like to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Aligning Strategy and Sales? Well, my academic research uh, always focused on uh, go-to-market elements, uh, including uh, channels and sales management. Uh, Then when I left academia and ran a business for 12 years, uh, you know, clearly I had to meet payroll and sell. And then after getting lucky in business and returning to academia, I taught strategy for a few years. And the fact is that despite decades of attention to uh, so-called strategic planning, There really is remarkably little research about how to link strategy with uh, the nitty-gritty of field execution, uh, especially sales efforts. Uh, In fact, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that if the uh, gods of strategy even mention sales, it's uh, typically advice from a fortune cookie. You know, get your incentives right, work as a team, reorganize. Uh, In other words, do good uh, and avoid evil. But sales is by far the biggest part of implementing a strategy uh, for most companies. And, uh, you know, in fact, your listeners uh, may find this data interesting because, uh, in my experience, uh, many folks are simply not aware of it. But uh, U.S. firms spend, uh, according to the best estimates, about $900 billion annually on their sales efforts. I'm not counting marketing. I'm talking about sales, including other elements of sales, SG&A, you know, travel, comp, everything. Now, just to put that number in perspective, that's more than three times what U.S. companies spend on all their consumer media advertising, Super Bowl ads, everything. It's more than 20 times what they spend on all online ads, you know, via Google or whatever. And it's more than 100 times their current spending on uh, social media. So, you know, whenever I see numbers like that, I'm, I'm always reminded of Mark Twain's comment. Uh, if you're going to put a lot of eggs in one basket, keep your eyes on that basket. So that, that's essentially what brought me to this topic. Excellent. There are, there's many different books on entrepreneurship in general, but also on strategy and sales. And so what makes your book different from others regarding the same topic? Well, I think you're right. There are many, many books. And the truth is the world does not need uh, another book about strategy formulation. We've got lots of them there. I would also argue that um, uh, entrepreneurs in particular don't need another book about uh, a selling method or, you know, 12 selling tips, uh, etc. But I would argue the uh, world and entrepreneurs in particular do need a book that tries to bring together uh, strategy uh, and sales. And I say that for a few reasons. One is, And what I'm about to say may sound obvious, but uh, in my experience over 30 years, uh, business people forget this. There is no such thing as effective selling that is not linked to the venture's strategy 
and goals. That simply uh, doesn't uh, exist. Um, the other thing is that I think if you look at the books about uh, selling methodologies, you know, many of them, I think, are simply not supported by the research. And, you know, uh, um, uh, anyone who reads my book can see where uh, that, that research is and what it says. But more importantly, even the good selling methodologies are relevant in, a, in certain contexts, but not others. But, you know, there's a whole infrastructure of consultants and trainers out there who, um, you know, essentially want to sell their methodology despite the context, because their incentive is uh, the classic, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So I think that's what's different. Uh, my book is not uh, a, simply a strategy book, and it's not a um, selling tip book, but it is about how do you bring together your strategy, assuming that you have one, with the behaviors you're going to need uh, in selling in order to execute that strategy. So that being said, how how would you suggest the reader engage with your book? Is this a book that they should read from front to back, or is this one they can go in and kind of cherry pick different ideas when needed? Well, uh, might be helpful to uh, outline what the um, you know the basic idea, the framework uh, is uh, for the book, and then uh, how the chapters uh, try to uh, execute uh, on that framework. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That does make sense. All right, the, the basic idea in the book is this. Um, I start from an assumption, and I think it's a pretty darn good assumption. In business, value is created or destroyed in the marketplace with customers. In any business, value is created or destroyed out there in the market with customers, not in planning meetings, not in product development meetings, uh, and uh, so forth. Now, the market includes the industry that you compete in, the customer segments where you choose to play, and the buying processes at customers that you sell and service. And if a company has a strategy as opposed to a wish list or a, um, you know, a, uh, a big number goal, those factors, the industry, the segments, the buying processes and customers that you sell and service, those factors should inform a strategy and that strategy's sales tasks, by which I mean what it is your salespeople must be good at to deliver value and implement that strategy effectively. Then, assuming a coherent strategy, the issue is aligning actual selling behaviors with the required tasks. And ultimately, entrepreneurs, managers, and corporations basically have three levers to do that. First, and most importantly, people. Who your salespeople are, what they know, how you hire and develop their skills so that they can execute your strategies tasks not those of a generic selling methodology or perhaps what they learned at another firm that made a different set of strategic choices. That's the first lever. The second lever is control systems. Uh, the company's performance management practices, uh, including money, sales compensation, incentives, and the metrics that uh, are used to measure sales effectiveness. And then the third uh, lever is what uh, in the book I call sales environment, the wider company context in which sales initiatives get developed and executed, how communication works or doesn't work across organizational boundaries, and how sales managers, not just salespeople, are selected and developed. And I think companies can use this framework uh, to do a few important things. Uh, first, make sure in their strategy meetings they're having the right dialogue. And part of that dialogue must include what that strategy means for people in the field. There's an important implication uh, in this way of thinking about sales, and that is that, again, effective selling is ultimately the outcome of an organization's strategy and efforts, not just the result of uh, individual heroic efforts in the field. And in my experience, working with lots of startups 
and uh, venture capital firms, uh, that's a message that many entrepreneurs, and for that matter, VCs, don't, uh, don't fully understand. And secondly, if you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or an investor, for that matter, uh, I think the framework uh, can save you money and perhaps even redirect how you spend that money. Uh, and it should certainly get you out of the office and make you more curious about what happens when your uh, salespeople actually meet with prospects. Then what the book does, uh, the organization of the book uh, and the uh, various chapters is to walk through the elements that I just mentioned, strategy, the choices implicit in a coherent strategy, how to analyze sales tasks, and those levers. Each of the chapters in the book uh, focuses on those. And um, it might be helpful, Wade, I think uh, pr probably the, the best way I can answer your uh, question about how to read it is to give the reader a, uh, a give the listener rather, uh, a quick overview of, uh, of what's in the book. Fair enough? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. The uh, book has four parts. Uh, part one essentially outlines what I just did in uh, outlining the, uh, the basic idea and framework in the book and um, you know, provides examples of what happens if you don't think these things through. Then part two of the book is uh, linking strategy and sales. And basically it focuses on the core elements of each side of that. Uh, there's a chapter that looks at the uh, foundational prerequisite for uh, what I'm talking about, and that is the presence of a coherent strategy. Uh, and uh, that's a big issue in many firms. Many companies uh, confuse strategy with their values, with their mission, uh, with their purpose. Those are all important things, but they're very, very different things. The company has a strategy. It is making choices about where to play, where not to play, and how. And those choices, uh, in effect, determine what the important sales tasks are. There's a, a chapter in the book about communicating strategy. Again, a very, very big issue. Uh, companies are typically very bad at this, and you'll see the data in the book about how bad. Uh, but um, I guarantee, I guarantee to our listeners that whatever the people in their ventures are good at, they are not good mind readers. It is really difficult for people to execute a strategy that doesn't exist or a strategy they don't understand. So communication is, uh, is very valuable. And then the last chapter in that portion of the book basically takes this down to the ground level and provides a process, uh, you know, a step-by-step -step process for thinking about how to identify what I call the ideal or core customers uh, for your uh, business. And in fact, the uh, example there is a startup business. The next part of the book is about uh, performance management, and this part is probably most relevant uh, to those folks in a company that have the responsibility for managing the available sales, resources, people, time, and money. Um, there's a chapter here about hiring and development and organizing salespeople. And again, I think the data here is... Um, uh, is illuminating. Uh, it, it's this, and the data, by the way, says this is a fairly daunting task. If you look at turnover data in sales, and uh, my experience is that the data I'm about to cite is from established companies, but uh, the turnover rates are even higher for obvious reasons in um, uh, startup ventures. On average, the average American company has a turnover rate in sales somewhere between 25 and 30 percent annually, on average, across industries. What does that mean? That means that every four years or so, the average American company is, in effect, having to replace its sales force. That's a big task. So hiring is an important issue. Uh, the next uh, chapter in that portion of the book is about money. It's about sales compensation and incentives. Now, there are people who will tell you that... Um, 
either all about money, uh, which I, is uh, a limited perspective for reasons I'll mention in a moment, or that it has nothing to do with money, that it's all about intrinsic rewards. Uh, that latter point of view, you know, all I can say is that is not the uh, that I've done for the last 55 years plus. Money matters, not just in sales, but in other areas of business. Compensation and incentives matter. But I think what the data will show you is that you've got to think about the appropriate compensation system as a necessary but not sufficient cause of getting the behavior that you want. In other words, if you want team selling and all the incentives are individually based, uh, I almost guarantee you, you're not going to get the behavior you want. Even when you do get the incentives aligned, there's simply much more, those other levers I talked about, much more to getting field behaviors to align with the tasks in strategy. And then the final chapter in that portion of the book uh, looks at a key dimension uh, of sales performance issues, which in my experience are probably the most underutilized lever for affecting behavior in, uh, in most companies. Then the final portion of the book is called Closing. It's about making connections. And the connections I'm talking about in those final two chapters are of two, for, uh, two sorts. One is developing sales managers that can actually manage, which is a big issue in um, uh, companies across industries. Single biggest complaint C-suite executives have about their sales managers is that they're basically super salespeople managers. Um, a lot of truth to that. Uh, this chapter provides a way of dealing with that issue. And then the final chapter is about the cross-functional connections that are required for effective selling. The links between sales and marketing, sales and finance, sales and HR in uh, enabling effective selling in the field. So Frank, you just gave us a great, you know, what I would consider a bird's eye view of what you wrote in your book. And now I'm asking you to take it even a step further and really give us a, you know, a satellite view, if you will. And that's it. If the reader could only take away one concept, principle, or action item out of everything you just discussed with us, out of your entire book, what would you want that to be? Well, uh, since the book is about strategy and sales, I hope I'm um, permitted to. Uh, one for the strategy folks and the others uh, for those carrying a bag in the field. Fair enough? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I've sort of said this about the strategy side, but again, many companies do not have a strategy. I mean, that is a brute fact. Uh, and it's really tough to get good things accomplished in business without a strategy. Uh, you know, and the reason many companies don't have a strategy is what I said earlier. They confuse strategy with things like purpose, vision, values. And by the way, that is particularly true. Uh, in entrepreneurial ventures, which quite rightly require passion. Uh, but passion is not the same as a strategy. And any organization's strategy, purpose, or vision cannot be independent of how the world changes. Because again, value is created or destroyed in the marketplace, uh, not, uh, not meetings. Then on the uh, sales side, um, I guess uh, he, what I would uh, say are the key takeaways following, again, first, as always in business, people. You need disappearing link to your strategy, focused and customized training initiatives, beware the uh, tra sales training guru with the alleged all-purpose methodology. Uh, that's very, very unlikely uh, to be true. And you also need ongoing attention to broadening salespeople's skills as markets and sales tasks change. Uh, the reality in any business is that uh, it is not the responsibility of the marketplace to understand and be nice to your venture strategy. The market will do what the market will do for lots of reasons that are fundamentally out of the entrepreneur's control. Regulatory issues, technology, competition, the macro uh, environment, etc. It's the entrepreneur's responsibility to figure out what's going on out there and adapt 
Now that may sound unfair, but that's the way uh, that's the way the world works. That's why this is an ongoing process. It's not a one shot deal. It's not something that you can quote solve grand offsite, a great speech, or simply through uh, the compensation system. Uh, so I guess those would be my uh, my few satellite comments, Wade. Excellent. Thank you. And and this next question is one that really I would love for it to be a quote, uh, so, something that you wrote ultimately. And if you, if you don't have something, then you can definitely use uh, another quote that you used in the book. But uh, right here, I'm looking for what is your favorite quote from from your book? Um, I guess my favorite quote, it's, it's not mine. I'm quoting someone in the book, uh, but it comes from uh, the novelist John le Carre. I don't know if you're familiar with Carre. He wrote those spy novels and then um, uh, later on different sorts of novels. But in one of his spy novels, uh, one of his characters says something that I think every entrepreneur, every salesperson, I would argue every executive uh, should have on a um, either a big sign uh, in their office or, for that matter, tattooed on a prominent body part. And the quote, a desk is a dangerous place from which to view the world. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that's right. Uh, you know, my version of this book, uh, I, um, uh, I use uh, Jim Coke, the uh, founder and CEO of Boston Beer, someone I know uh, reasonably well. Uh, and his comments, but uh, Jim has been at it 30 years. He was the sales force at Boston Beer for some years. He still makes calls on a regular basis. And I guarantee that if you don't uh, leave your desk and get out, there are important things you don't know about your business. So that, that would be the quote I would cite. That's huge. I appreciate you sharing that. And this next question, you know, I think your book's going to help a lot of people uh, and that's what this next question is all about, too, is what is a book that you've read that created a paradigm shift and has, and has had a huge impact on your life? Well, I mean, first, let me uh, – I don't mean to dodge that question, but like most people, it's not about books. The things that I think have had the biggest impact on my life haven't been uh, via books. They've been through the existential experiences one has in life. That's that if we're talking about business books – if I had to recommend one business book, only one, uh, people, especially entrepreneurs, I recommend a book that is now, oh boy, I hadn't thought about this, probably almost 50 years old, uh, a book written by Peter Drucker. I uh, don't know how many of our listeners remember Peter Drucker. Uh, you know, I mentioned Peter Drucker to my MBA students uh, earlier semester, and it was like I was talking about Julius Caesar. But uh, Peter Drucker became well-known, among other reasons, because he was really, really smart. And Drucker wrote a little book. It's not that thick. A little book, I think, in the mid called Managing for Results. And uh, Drucker was not only smart, he could write well, without jargon, clearly. And, um, you know, uh, much of what I'm saying about strategy is in that book, and I highly recommend it because it's clear, it's practical, and uh, it's worth going to on a number of occasions. Peter Drucker, Managing for Results. Excellent. You know, I haven't had that one suggested before, so thank you for recommending that. And Frank, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you and your book, Aligning Strategy in Sales? Well, I think the best way to get uh, that information is, I would hope, uh, listeners buy the book. And by the way, in this offer I'm about to um, uh, make sincerely, Wade, uh, I would welcome feedback from anyone who reads the book, uh, especially the uh, sorts of um, uh, audience you reach uh, with your podcast, Wade. What makes sense to you? What doesn't make sense? What I have found... You know, I've got five other books. What I have found is that is the only way to improve. Uh, but the book is published by Review Press. You can uh, you can order from them, or of course you can order from Amazon. <laughs> and I would hope, he said, without real knowledge of this, I would hope for your local bookstore as well. Excellent. Okay, very good. Well, Frank, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book, your creation, with us. Thank you. It was really, again, my pleasure, my honor. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like to get your hands on aligning strategy and sales, 
or any of the other resources mentioned by Frank, just look at the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.